Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to part four, four of our build of the Fallout Wasteland Warfare miniatures from Medifius Entertainment that they get very kindly sent to me in advance of the game actually coming out in May. Uh, now, if you remember in previous episodes, we have filmed a super mutant and we have filmed painting puppy dog, dog meat. Uh, now it's time to do the Fallout survivor loan wanderer survivor fallout with the uh, yeah there's like different names i think it's the sole survivor in fallout 4 uh and the chaps at medifius are very kindly sent me nora so we're going to paint nora now i'm not great at painting people so this should be interesting uh again like with the other videos we're going to keep it a reasonably simple paint job nothing too complicated uh it's designed really i'm doing these for people that have got the game never really painted miniatures before and just keen to get everything painted up and playing the game so we'll keep it to a fairly simple color scheme as always i'm going to be using my Citad beloved citadel paints and we'll see what we can do so it's all been primed in black uh, chaos black spray as with the other ones and i uh, have made myself a little bit of a, a rod for my own back here by gluing the arms on but like i said in one of the first videos and i think in the, in the how to do resin video when you're using super glue on models or even super glue even if i can actually form the words when i try and speak them um, then the difficulty is that when you're putting super glue on a model if you paint it all up and then you put super glue on if you put too much on it can fog and mist and ruin your paint job so i decided i'll bite the bullet and i'll just paint it anyway i mean I'll paint it glue the arms on first and then we'll try and paint it so we'll see how we get on so let's get cracking anyway let's keep this a simple paint job if we can gonna start off by painting always try and start from the inside out start with the majority of the paint job first the thing you're painting the most of so we're going to paint the vault suit and we're going to start with their base color of Lothurn blue now i don't know if this will work this might not work at all it might come out completely the wrong color but it's all an adventure i've never painted a vault suit before so we'll find out so first off we've just got some Lothurn blue on the wet palette of wet palettes as always if you don't know what a wet palette is and you've never tried one you need to make one and use it this is just the lid of a sandwich tub uh, i forgot to mention by the way this little blue bit around the edge here this is the airtight seal uh, it helps if you make it in an airtight sealable box just because then the, the moisture will stay in and it won't dry out very fast so try and use like a food box or a lunch box or something like that i use the lid because it's not very deep uh, i've got a video about how to make and use a wet palette here that's an enormous finger kind of here i'll pop it up now a link so go and watch that cost you a few quid and it'll make your painting much better so let's crack on so i've got the low thin blue on the wet palette i've added a tiny amount of water just to thin it because it's quite a dense paint this it's a layer it's a uh, is it a layer paint it's a layer paint but it's actually quite thick for a layer paint so we're going to crack straight on uh, and we're going to get it on now the first coat when it goes on maybe a bit because it's a layer paint it may be a bit translucent but don't panic too much if it looks a bit patchy like that don't worry we're going to do more than one coat so possibly less than three but more than one i will say to avoid infringing anyone else's well-known catchphrases so we're just going to paint pretty much the whole model in this thin it with a little bit of water you apply thin coats don't go in with paint straight from the pot because you'll just hide all the details and as we found out when we did um, dog meat some of the real fine details on this are easily covered up even with um, things like thinned washes so just get it thin with some water and get the whole thing painted first of all okay so that's the blue the base blue color down for the jumpsuit the vault suit uh, now i need to paint the yellow bits on the vault suit but i'm not really sure what's going on with the collar here because of the black primer it's hard to see so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sort of do a bit that i would do later on and put a base coat on the face just on the face and it's not going to be anything major other than it's just so i can see what the collar's doing because it's hard to see so i've got some bugman's glow which is there that will be our base color for the flesh later on I've got some of that on my wet palette I need to get a little bit on my brush and I just need to get a little bit of that on the face area 
just so I can see exactly what's going on with this color. I'll probably go over some of the blue anyway, but I can sort of go backwards and forwards and touch that in. But I suddenly realized I need to get a load of paint in there just to see exactly what's going on. So I may as well get this coat on now. I'm not being neat or anything. Again, because I probably need to go in and touch in anyway. And this is just so I can make sure there's some paint on the neck. I don't want to be trying to paint this later on when I've gone to all the trouble of painting all the yellow bits and stuff in. So I'm just going to get this coat on here now. I won't do the hands or anything. Okay, so that's the Bugman's Glow has dried now. And it's just like I say, a guide coat, just to give me an idea of where the sort of the collar actually finishes. Uh, and it's done that quite, I did the hands as well while I was there, I just thought I may as well, because then that gave me an idea of where the hands are. There's a bit of a rough mold on this hand here, and a seam line I hadn't noticed, um, but it's not too bad. So it just gives me an idea of what I'm painting when I do the gun, the uh, pistol. Now, that's been done, so I've got a rough idea of where the collar is. I did have a look at the 3D CAD renders on the Modifius website, just to get some idea, because it is actually quite hard to pick out some of the details on this, purely because it's so small. Uh, and the detail on the figure isn't quite as crisp and clear as the detail on the 3D render, but that's to be expected. This is a, a moulding. It's not going to be as accurate as the original 3D render. But it's giving me an idea now anyway. So uh, we're not going to go ahead and do the yellow just yet. I decided against that. What I'm going to do first is the shading, or the, the sort of the... Well, shading is the best word. The wash on the blue jumpsuit, just to get that done and out of the way. And for this, we're going to use, like we did in the last episode, a sort of a glaze wash type thing. We're going to use Drakenhof Nightshade, which is a blue shade, and some Lamian Medium to thin it down. Now again, if you remember in the last episode, I explained, you can just thin these shades down, just giving it a good shake. You can just thin these shades down with water, but that does change the way. I've done it wrong, I've done this first. Oh. It does change the way the shade actually behaves. The acrylic binders break down in water, so it's always better to thin them with... It doesn't have to be Lamian Medium. If you're using Citadel, it's handy. Uh, there are other brands out there that do glaze mediums. So we're going to get one, two, three, four. Four dots of the Lamian Medium. Because Lamian Medium is effectively just a, a shade without the actual pigment in it. So... It's always better. It's not going to pull apart the acrylic binders like a shade, like a like water would. There's no harm in it. It's just you'll get a better effect if you thin with a glaze medium or with this Lamian medium. It just won't be as bitty and grainy, and you won't get many tide marks. So that's that. That's made up. Let's now get some of that on Dora. Oh, no, it's called, it's called Dora then. What are we calling Dora for? Nora. Get some of this on Nora. So I'll find a brush, and we'll just basically get this on her vault suit. Not trying to be neat, not trying to be careful. Uh, now you can see now because I have thinned it down, it's not quite as bold and stark as it would be if I just used neat Drakenhof nightshade. That would be quite a dark blue colour. I don't need to go that dark really. I just want to get this on a just so it can go into the recesses, give a suggestion of depth, and also help me see where the details are a bit better. So I'll go around and get this done. And we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so that shade is now dried. Now, a confession, uh, after I'd done that little coat that you saw me do as a glaze, I realised it wasn't really dark enough, so then I went over again when it had dried with just a coat of the Drakenhof Nightshade, just straight from the pot, uh, and it gave a much darker look, which is kind of cool. Now, I have also gone ahead and painted the little yellow piping on the vault suit, purely because it was too small for me to film. I had to get really close with my fine... Uh, double O Windsor and Newton brush so that's painted on I had to take a guess at to what this collar is doing it's kind of a collar like she's got the collar open so I've taken a guess uh, and the yellow was just painted with uh, some thin down Avalanche sunset just two or three really really thin watered down coats so I could build it up slowly so that's now been done next we need to bring this blue back and what we're going to do for this is we're going to go back to our original Lothurn blue uh, but we're going to thin it down quite a lot and a bit like we did on the super mutant I'm just getting some on my palette now a bit like we did with the super mutant We're going to build this up in glazes So I'm just getting quite a lot of water in the paint now. So it's really really watery. I don't want it to be thick at all Because I want to build this up slowly And all we're going to do is we're going to get some of these thinned glazes and just go over some of the, the highlight areas So like the top of the leg. So for example here 
just to really slowly build up some lighter areas just a little bit might be a bit watery that but it'd be fine just to build it up so we can start building up some highlight areas so it's not quite as dark as it looks on here now it's made more difficult by the fact there's lots of ridge detail on these limbs if they were just smooth limbs that would be a bit easier so I've got to kind of move it around and see how it dries and then we'll see how that comes out okay and after a couple of those glazes you can see now the light blue has come back quite nicely uh, but it's kind of I've left let's have a look I've left sort of dark patches in the crotch area there under the arms on the inside of the arms and a bit more on the back of the legs uh, and I put some highlight on the shoulder as well and it's just really to lighten up those areas where the light would fall down from above so it just gives that effect it just lightens the suit up as well and evens out that dark blue you can see here on the shin pads where I haven't done anything that's the kind of color it was so it just lightens it back up and sometimes that's all you need to do for, if you're just painting this for tabletop gaming and you're not going for museum quality then sometimes you know your base color a shade and then the base color over the top in a glaze can sometimes work quite nicely it doesn't look like much at first when you start doing it but if you like I said in the last video if you do a glaze then you add a little bit on it doesn't really do much you add a bit more another coat once it's dried and it's a bit thicker and then you add a bit more and the colors a bit bolder and you add a bit more and if you reduce the area of you, the where you're brushing the glazed area gets smaller and smaller and the highlight gets smaller and smaller and you get this nice fade and blend between two different colors so it's come out quite nice I'm quite pleased with that so what is next uh, next I think we'll do the leather work now we've got the leather armor and then we've also got um, the wood on the butt of the rifle and the stock of the rifle and we've also got um, Nora's hair now all three are going to be like brown although her hair is more dark black than brown um, so we're going to try and vary them up a little bit so I'm going to use for the leather we'll do the leather pouches and stuff first and we're going to start with some Gawthor brown as the base color for that so I've got some on my wet palette I have it uh, add a little bit of water to it because I don't want it too thick trick is when you're painting tiny things and lots of little crisp details try and keep some thinness to the paint if you can just because it makes it a little bit easier to handle so I'm just going to get that off on my tissue right so let's crack on and we'll go with it's quite a thick paint Gawthor Brown we'll go with the leather armor so we'll just do a nice overall coat on this and as always yes it may take more than one coat possibly less than three but not one okay so that's the Gawthor brown on and you've got all the bits on the legs and also the belt and the bandolier and the shoulder pads they're all done now the next step would be to do the boots and the woodwork on the rifle uh, and the hair because I'm going to use a brown base color for the hair uh, however before I start putting the wood parts on the rifle I really need to see where those wood parts are and it's quite hard while it's still covered in primer and bits of blue paint so what I'm going to do is do the metallic parts first and that's pretty straightforward for that we're just going to use our good friend lead belcher so i've got some on my wet palette i shall get some tiny amount of the water of moistness and we'll do the uh, we'll do the rifle at the same time as the 10 millimeter pistol just to get it all done and done so i'm just going to crack on and hopefully on camera i'm trying it held up this time rather than down on the desk so i've got no idea if this is in focus it's really awkward to get to film these tiny little figures because they're so small without locking the camera so we're going to work our way around both the metal for the 10 millimeter pistol here obviously let's see I'm locking the camera there on both sides and we've also got to do the rifle as well and like I say what I'll do on the rifle is I'll paint the whole thing and then we'll go back and do the wood it's just so I can see once it's got the paint on there which bits of rifle actually need to be wood Right, I'm back on the desk again now. I've got to tell you, you've got to be honest with you, trying to film in the proper style with my elbows on the desk and the camera pointing horizontally and this in front of the camera really close up without like, you know, like Duncan's got like a camera on a tripod with a really, really good quality, high quality digital zoom and producer and probably someone to adjust the focus. 
and a ping pong ball and everything else it's really hard especially when you've got to wear a, a zoomed in magnifying headset thing like i've got knocking the camera with the brush trying to get the camera in close big things it's not a problem that kind of filming but little tiny figures it's a nightmare so i've come back down to the desk so we'll have to survive on this view for now i thought i'd give it a try but it's just not it's just not there's nowhere i can put the camera so i can wave the brush around and not knock the camera every five minutes it's quite frustrating so yes having a little production team actually helps when you're filming these things doing it on your own on an iphone <laughs> yeah not that cool anyway enough waffle uh we have painted the guns the uh, lead belcher i touched up the uh bugman's glow on the hands a little bit it is kind of evident now that the moulding on the weapon here on the 10mm pistol is a bit rough around the edges, especially where the hand is. It's not crisp and clear like on the Super Mutant, where you could see his finger going through the trigger guard and hand wrapped around it. It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit nebulous. But we'll survive, we'll survive. Washes will kind of hide all that anyway when we do the shading. So they've been painted. Now we can move on and we can do the brown for the boots and the stock of the rifle. And we'll get the brown on the hair as well. We'll just get a base coat of the brown for now. Because we're going to do the face first before we do the actual hair so we'll uh, we'll get that done and for that we're going to use dryad bark uh, again it's all going to be a lot of brown on this kit but hey they're going to be slightly different brown so i've got some dry bark on my wet palette get a little bit of water on the bush get some paint on the brush get the excess off on my thumb like that and what we're going to do now is paint in all these details uh, on the rifle. I painted the whole thing metallic so I could just see where I was painting. So this step now is to get these, the boots and the base colour for the hair done. So I'll crack on with that. Okay that's the browns painted on so the boots, the hair and the wood parts of the rifle that's been done. Next up we want to paint this banding or this tape around the stock. Now in the game often it's blue or black tape but we just want to make it stand out a bit just so it's more interesting so we're going to start off with some Carrack stone uh, again it's not game accurate but I don't mind so I've got some on my palette a little bit of water uh, and this is just a case of carefully and as best as possible on camera with the light which I can't see Boo! The problems of filming it just get this painted on to all these little raised bits Okay, so that's those tape or bands on the weapon there, all done, looking pretty good. Uh, two more base coats left to do. We've got to do the pit boy, and we've got to do the, the sort of the cuff on this arm. On both arms, they have like a leather or dark grey cuff, which is what the pit boy goes on. You have one on each arm because you might wear it on the other arm. Uh, so we need to get the base coats color, base coat colours down for those. Uh, for the pit boy, we are going to use where is it? We're going to use. Death World Forest, just as a base coat. So I've got some on the wet palette of wet palettes, and we'll get that done first. Let's crack on. Okay, so that's the pit boy done. Uh, the last bit now to do is the cuff on this sleeve, and it's just that bit there. And for that, we're going to use Mechanicus Standard Grey. Uh, quite simple we're just going to paint this over now again remember these are the base coats this is just what we do before the shading now i know we did the shading on the suit but that's just part of the process so let's get this bit painted and with that and the pit boy done that's all our base colors now painted so we can get onto the shading. Shading is a great way to give depth to your figure as you saw me did the blue and also a great way to bring out some of the details and to hide some of the less sort of crisp paint lines that you've done where you've got two colours meeting and it's a bit wibbly wobbly. Shades will nicely hide that. So we're going to use a number of different shades carefully. Uh, the first one we're going to use is Null Oil. If I can find the front. Null Oil which is a matte shade. Give it a good shake otherwise it'll be glossy. And we're going to put this on the rifle in its entirety. Uh, we're going to put it on the boots and we are going to put it on the hair and also on that cuff collar thing on the arm. So what we're going to do is take it straight from the bottle, or in this case I've got it on a little bit of a palette, and we're just going to go ahead and put it on. So as always just get it on there, try and make sure it doesn't pool up anywhere so if you do suddenly see it starts to pool just take some off on your brush 
and then we'll take some off on a piece of tissue with your brush take some off the, I'll start that sentence again take some off your brush on a piece of tissue that's better and then just move it around you've got a, a few seconds to keep it moving around so we're just going to carefully get this all over the rifle null oil is like a dark grey sort of oily colour okay so that's the rifle done and the boots and the hair so it's just a dark shade just to get into all the recesses and hide away I may go and do a second coat on the hair just to darken it down even more uh, so what's next? Next we want to do something with the skin and for this we're going to use Reitland Flesh Shade. Now remember this is going over Bugman's Glow and this is quite simple this is just basically touch it on and get it all over the face. Same again don't let it pull up too much so if you get too much on there just get it off or, or get the, all the shade, shade off little, 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 little words get the shade off your brush on a piece of tissue and then remove the excess so we'll get that on the face and the hands Okay, and while that shade on the skin is drying, I did a second shade of Null Oil on the hair. And what we're going to do now is go in with some Null Oil Gloss, which is basically just Null Oil, but without the matting agents, so it dries shiny. And we're going to put this on the 10mm pistol, just so it stays shiny. I like to keep this one shiny, I don't know why, I just decided. Okay, now, just before we go ahead and put a shade on the leather, for the leather armor we're going to do something interesting to it we're going to tint it a little bit and we're going to go back to lamenta's yellow that we've used before uh, on the super mutant and we're going to just tint it with this yellow i'm going to use it neat i'm not going to thin it down this time and this is just to give the leather a slightly different tint a more yellowy tint because if you look at the things in game they kind of have a slight yellowy tint to them so i'm going to apply this to all the leather armor Okay, so you can see that's just changed the colour of the leather arm ever so slightly. Sets it apart from the boots and from the, the rifle stock. Uh, so now we can do the shading, and for the shade we're just going to use good old, when it's around the front, Agrax Earth Shade. And we're just going to go over all the leather armour with this. Fairly heavily, uh, because we want it to darken it and get into all the recesses. So I'm just going to go over and apply all this. I might need two coats, I'll see how it comes out when it dries. If I think it needs more, I'll go and do a second coat. Okay, so that's the shades all done. I also put some Agrax Earth shade on the Pit Boy, and I gave the 10 mil pistol a second coat of Null Oil Gloss because we'll work that back later. Now, this is where it gets tricky now because the next bits are bringing back the edge highlights, painting in the Pit Boy screen, and things like that. And because this figure is so small, I'm going to need to get really close up with my old man helmet of seeing to actually paint these fine details kind of means it's not something I can film because I really need to get up close and personal same with the face and everything else it's just not something I can practically film unfortunately because I just need to get really really close so what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and get all the sort of detail bits done and then I'll go through when we come back I'll go through what colors I used and what I actually did so my apologies I can't show you the next bit it's just that I really need to get close up to see what I'm doing uh, and I can't get the camera in there while I'm doing that so I will go away and do that and when we next meet in a few moments, I will show you what I've done. So, back in a moment. Okay, so all those extra bits have done. And again, my apologies, I couldn't show you that. It's just the details are so fine and it was such fiddly work. I had to get really close up. So there's no way I could have filmed that for you at all. But I'll very quickly run you through what I did. I didn't do a lot, but it's all fiddly work. Uh, first and foremost, on the rifle, I took some uh, Karak stone. And added some white to it to top up the bandages or the the tape let me get a pointy stick maybe tweezers to top up the tape on the butt of the rifle and i just added that there to give it a little bit on the top just a little lighter highlight on the top just to where the light would be coming from uh, i went over the me metallic parts of the rifle with the gloss black and null oil just one quick coat uh, and then I went over it with some Vallejo True Metals Duraluminium, just very lightly dry brush with a tiny brush, just to get some bling and sparkle back, just so it's got some shiny edges, just to really pick up the edges. On the leather for the uh, leather armour, so the shoulder pads, the belt, all the straps and the feet, uh, I went over with some Karak Stone, just as a fine edge highlight, just to pick up the edges. 
uh, on the yellow piping on the uniform on the vault suit. Uh, I went over with one of my least favourite colours, Uriel Yellow. Oh, I hate that colour, it's so transparent. Uriel Yellow, just on the, the sort of the upper area of her chest and the collar, just to give it a bit of a highlight. And then I gave it a very careful pin wash with some Seraphim Sepia. Uh, what else did I do on the hair? If you remember, we did that uh, with the Null Null Wash first. I went over that with some Gawthor Brown, but just as like an edge highlight for some of the tresses. Not covering the whole thing, just on some of the, the stripy bits, just where the edges are to pick those out. Then added some white to that and did some more. And then did another quite sort of delicate Null Null Wash, but it was really focused in the recesses between the sort of strands of hair. It was quite delicately placed. It wasn't just slapped all over. Uh, the 10 millimeter Pistol, yeah, you see. Uh, that was, as we left it, it was covered in Null Null Gloss. What I did then was, I went over it with some Gullim and Blue, which is a glaze. I went over that with the glaze, just to blue it up. Uh, then gave it a wash of uh, normal Null Null, just a little bit into the, some of the recesses. And then gave it a dry brush of the Vallejo uh, True Metal Duraluminium again. So, and they're not actually called True Metal, my apologies. It's called just Metal Colour. It's the Vallejo Metal Colour Duraluminium. And again, that was dry brushed on with a very small brush. The Gullum and Blue just gives it that kind of blue steel look, and then the dry brushing just gives it a slightly sort of scratched and tarnished look, which I think came out quite nicely. What else was there? The boots I just dry, uh, dry brushed over with some Carac Stone, just very, very lightly, and I painted the little thing on a chest, the little metal thing you can see there. don't quite know what it is. It's like a little radio. Uh, that was just uh, painted with the lead belcher given a null null wash and then a very light dry brush of that metal colour duraluminium again. And last but not least, of course, the flesh. The flesh is fairly straightforward. I followed uh, the Games Workshop Warhammer Citadel style. We did it with the um, Bugman's Glow first and then a wash of the Reichland Flesh Shade. I just went over that with some Acadian Flesh Tone, thinned down a bit more than normal, just over the raised areas and leaving the recesses with the shade in them. Uh, and then I went in with some Kislev flesh just on the raised areas like the ridges of the you know the eyebrows and the ridge of the nose and the chin and the tops of the cheeks just to pop those a little bit. And then the last thing I did was put some white scar in the screen for the pit boy. Now there is one thing I'm going to show you uh, and this is because it's cool and I can't not show you. I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn that white pit boy screen into a 1980s style or fallout style green VDU screen. So let me go and get everything set up and we'll see how you do that. It's dead easy and it's awesome fun. Back in a moment. Okay, so let's get this done. You'll notice I've got the model uh, on the mounty grippy thing here and on a big blob of blue tack and some wood. That's just so I can keep it horizontal so the pit boy screen is horizontal because we're going to use the benefits of gravity and surface tension for this next step. Dead easy this bit. We're going to paint it like a VDU screen. You could just paint it green, that'd be fine. But why not paint it with some kind of shade to it so it's not just solid green, it's got that kind of illuminated screen look. Uh, what you're going to need for this are two things. A decent brush, I've got the uh, Wargamer Regiment brush from Army Painter. Not a small brush, you don't want a fine brush for this, you want a reasonably big brush. This is a nice sort of layer painting brush I suppose. And a very special colour that I adore and it is a MIG, uh, Ammo by MIG Crystal Periscope Green AMIG 096. It's a beautiful kind of lime green colour but it's a clear paint. Now it's not like, it's not as clear, it's not like Warpstone Glow or whatever the Citadel one is, which is a bright green. And it's not like, to me, a clear green. It's a bit sort of less clear than that. But you can see here the kind of colour it is. And this is dead easy. What you do, because it's got this wonderful property of being slightly transparent and translucent, and it's also got some wonderful surface tension properties, all you do is you get your brush, you knock the camera. Now, I'm doing this with my left hand, so this could go horribly wrong. Overload your brush a bit, not maybe that much, but get a good amount on your brush. And what you want to do is as steadily as possible, touch it to the bit you, where you want the paint to go. There. Now what will happen, we'll just leave that now. Uh, and there's a reason why we painted white underneath. Now what will happen is the surface tension fills that recessed shape. It's a recessed computer screen. It fills it to the edge, but it doesn't run over. So it just makes this nice, it fits perfectly. And it looks like you've got nice, clean, straight edges. Now it'll do one of two things. It will either just stay there and sort of stay solid green, because there's only a tiny screen, so it might not do what I need it to do. But it will either stay like a solid green, 
in which case that's fine we can live with that or the surface tension will either pull all the pigment either to the edges or to the center it does vary sometimes depending on the shape you're putting it in it'll either pull the pigment for the most part to the edges or to the center and it'll give a shaded effect so like the outside might be darker than the inside or the inside might be darker than the outside because we painted white underneath where the pigment collects it'll stay green and where the pigments pulled away from it'll go a little bit brighter because it's got the white underneath remember it's a clear color so I need to leave that for a while now it may well just dry green and completely flat because it's only a tiny area and it may not have enough area to actually start pulling the pigment around but we'll see what happens so we'll come back in a minute when that's had time to dry and we'll see what it looks like back in a moment okay so with the green paint now dry you can see it's come out with exactly the effect I was hoping for it, all the pigment is kind of pulled away to the edges of the screen so it's dark around the edges of the screen uh, and there's less pigment in the center which means by its nature of being a clear paint it shows the white underneath a bit more and you just get that effect of a lit glowing VDU screen if you wanted to you could add a little tiny bit of white in the middle there to make it even brighter but I'm happy to leave that as it is uh, if you have uh, any very very tiny white decals that look like little lines of text or something you could potentially put those on that screen for even more detail but I don't have any that are the right size it is really tiny there's my finger for comparison it is really tiny so yeah you could hand paint those in but I'm not going to because I don't have that kind of level of skill uh, you can see it dries a bit shiny but that's exactly perfect that's exactly what you want uh, if you wanted to you could go over with a little touch of gloss varnish your preferred gloss varnish over the screen just to make it even more glassy looking but that's come out absolutely spot on and that's actually Nora done she's finished now um, I'm quite pleased with how she's come out now I am not as I've said in some of my earlier videos this is only about the fifth or sixth little miniature figure I've ever really painted I've always avoided figures because I suck at painting them and I always sucked at painting but over the last you know year or so I've been working on my brush painting skills and it's not perfect by any means we're not talking you know museum quality display quality here um, I can still see things where I need to work on my skills a bit and improve my edge highlighting is still a bit sucky I've got to work on that but generally I'm really happy with how she's come out and like I said at the start I'm aiming these tutorials at beginners who really get in the game to play the game never really painted miniatures before and so I'm just showing you quick and easy ways to get these things painted so you've got some paint on the miniatures when you're playing them on the table and they're not just bare resin which looks terrible so if you follow the steps I've shown you in these videos so far you should come out with some natty looking uh, little minis and over time as you do more you'll only get better and better I, I've got lots more to paint so I'm hoping that I'll get better over time but I'm, I'm pleased with how she's come out it's a great place to start so that is her done now I haven't done the base and like I've said a few times we are going to show basing uh, or painting the bases in the next episode get that done I'm not going to show painting the other super mutant uh, because I've already shown that in the first one I might not actually get around to painting it anyway so I'm just showing the individual figures the next episode we will do how to paint the bases and that won't be a very long episode at all uh, then I will show how I'm going to mat these down because you can see she's quite shiny and that's just the nature of the paints uh, there is one step I'll do to mat these down uh, but we'll go over that in the basing episode because there's two options depending on whether it's going to be a display model or a handled model uh, but that's going to do it. I think this is a really, really nice model. Now, as, the, as for the review part, what's my review of the figure? Uh, it's a brilliant little figure, as with all the other ones. It's wonderfully detailed. Uh, I would say, the only sort of little thing I'd say is that when you look at the, the renders of the model on the website, uh, the sort of the CAD renders, what they're designed to look like, the detail is a lot more crisp. Uh, and like I said at the start, it's a limitation of the rendering process you know molding them into resin you're never going to get exactly the same level of detail as you would get say when it's first designed on computer uh, but it's still a great little figure there's tons of detail on there uh, a little bit soft the the 10 millimeter pistol comes out a bit soft and undefined as a bit rough and ready around the edges and yes I know I did forget to clean off the seam line on the oops on the back of her hand there I didn't see that at all until I started painting and it was too late for me to go in and clean it up so yeah there is a bit of a it's not exactly 100% crystal clear around the hands and the 10 mil pistol uh, compared to the super mutant that had perfectly molded hands and everything but it's a mini gripe it's nothing major it's not going to detract from the fact when you play this on the table it's going to look great so that's going to do us uh, yes it's a brilliant little figure and like the other ones I'd strongly recommend it uh, even if you're just getting these to, to display them rather than to play the game 
So as always, don't forget, uh, Fallout Wasteland Warfare is out in May. The website is uh, are open now for pre-orders. Uh, the guys at Modifius do say if you're wanting to get your hands on this game, they do recommend you pre-order it because uh, they'll fulfill all the pre-orders on launch day first and then work their way through the rest of the orders that come through after its launch. So if, you, if you're interested, go and have a look at the website. It's modifius.com or modifius.net, whichever you prefer. Go and have a look. There's loads of different kits. There's uh, lots of scenery items, vehicles. There's a Corvega. There's Nuka Cola machines and desks and computers. Uh, there's mutants. There's wasteland creatures. There's ghouls. There's survivors. There's Minutemen. There's tons and tons of variation on there. So whatever particular part of Fallout you like the most, do give that a go. Um, but yeah, go and check it out. It's really cool. And whether you want to play the game or just have some nice models to paint. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you as always to the guys at Modifius for sending these models to me. They are fantastic. I am enjoying painting them. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode where we will get the bases painted up and I'll show you the little thing I'm going to do with the matting of the of the shiny shiny paint. And uh, until next time, it just remains for me to say thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Adios. I can't get my finger on camera. Where's the camera? Adios amoeba. It's so close I can't get my hand into it. So I'm just going to wave my finger at you. Adios amoebas. I should put a little smiley face on there. It's, yay. Hee <laughs> hee.